Your bright, colorful flower beds have taken that first hit of cold weather, and gosh, the color fades fast. The annuals get pulled up, but what about perennials? Todd Moyer has the gardening instructions to help us winterize our flower beds. Great to have you. Good to be back. Are you shedding a tear this time of year? I, I enjoy and dislike this time of year. I know, pros and cons, right? Yes, definitely. Well, help us with our yards, because they are starting to look a little bit sad, which yeah. is great with Halloween in mind, but overall, we've got, got that spring game yep. in focus, and we want things to look as best as they can now and then. Definitely, yeah, we're lucky. We've got some great fall colors this fall, which has been amazing, but there's definitely some things that we can do to try and clean up the yard before we go into uh, full snow season. So. so what stays, what goes? So one of the things you want to do um, first, you want to identify what plants you have. And so with the perennials, you know, there's a couple different types of perennials. You have evergreen, semi-evergreen, you have woody perennials, and then just regular herbaceous perennials. And so if you are afraid, don't know, you can always call, you know, USU Ag Extension, you can call a local garden center, they'll have someone that's trained to know what they are. So once you've identified that, um, that's going to dictate how you actually want to take care of those plants. Um, so one of the examples yeah. of like an evergreen would be like your lavenders. Everybody probably has a lavender in their yard. Right. Um, so it's a semi-evergreen. Um, basically with these, there's not a whole lot you need to do with them. All you're going to do is you're going to find any of these dead branches that are already in there mm -hmm. and you're going to snip those off. Okay. You leave the rest of the plant but you're going to you know take off any of those dead ones and leave the live stuff because that's going to go through the winter just fine and you're not going to have to worry about what that tool? in spring. What tool? What gadget are you, you using You like these there? scissors? Yeah, these I are do. pretty sweet aren't they? What are those? Um, these are just a scissor uh, you know it's a um, got a one nice, you got from a garden center. It's got a nice curve to it, allows yes. you to kind of get in there. Yeah, it's really nice. You can really use any scissors. I mean, just your kids' scissors from uh, okay. doing their homework. Don't you can tell. use those. Just return them exactly. later. Exactly, yep. And so we just continue to take that stuff off and that will help just clean it up, get rid of all the discoloration. Um, and then we move on to like, uh, this is a great example of your woody perennials. Mm -hmm. um, this is an Edo peony. Okay. Um, these are extremely expensive, but they're gorgeous. They have a lot more unique colors than your typical peony. And so one of the things you'll see, um, you can see that coloration down here, mm -hmm. and that's actual bark that's forming on the plant. So oh. this isn't gonna die all the way back to the base. It will continue to grow from there. And you can see on here, um, actual buds forming for yet next year's growth. Okay. And so what you'll want to do is you find where that bark is growing to and then you'll just clip off right above it. Ah, why does that scare me? Why does that scare me? You don't have to be afraid. It's okay. <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Um, and so one of the, you just keep, you know, pruning those off. And the whole bush. The whole bush gets yep. a haircut. Yep. You just take all of the growth off above that, that woody growth for next year's growth. Okay. And one of the things you'll just watch for is, you know, just because um, there's not a bud um, or a visible bud, you can still make sure that you leave the, the woody part of the plant because a bud might be popping out in, in in that space. Okay. So just basically take it to where you see the discoloration, prune that off. Is it a better safe than sorry situation? I mean, you should be able to see is what yes, you're saying. Yes, definitely. You should be able yeah, to see you'll see the discoloration okay. on it, and then you just prune up to there. Okay, what um, else? Your next ones that you'll have is just your regular herbaceous perennials. Um, echinacea or coneflower is kind of a typical one. Uh -huh. um, basically with these, you'll just you look down towards the base and you'll see it swelling uh, down here towards the base for next year's growth. And so we'll just go right above that. Bye bye, pretty Prune plant. that off. You served us well. Same thing with these other ones. And we just quickly go through. And if you've got a lot of time, you know, you can spend more <laughs> or you can just get or just super go quick. For it. And clip get it, it done. Off. Depending on the and size you trim of your it yard. down all the way, all the way to the base. You know, most of your plants like this, you can typically, uh, as a safe bet, leave two to three inches. Okay. If you're scared, just <laughs> leave two to three I inches. Need, and, and I need you're numbers. Not gonna, I need rules. Yeah. So main important things identify what the plan is okay and then you can go from there on how to take care of it one of the easy ones is like this right here yeah um, this is a sedum and you can see it's next year's growth coming up in that base. Is this an base. evergreen or a non-evergreen? This is non-evergreen, but you see those little babies? Yep. Yep. Uh -oh. So you can just take off everything above that. They're cute. And you're going to be just fine. Oh gosh. And then there that's the next year's growth. See, that was more than two to three inches. I'm I just know. telling you. <laughs> I'm just giving you a safe bet. I like it. I, I don't like want to ruin your, uh, your I like garden. It. So basically, you just take those things off, and, and it really isn't as difficult as people make it out to be. Yeah. But you can go through, clean up the yard, get it nice and pretty, so that you're going into fall. One of the most uh, 
greatest misconceptions is grasses. People okay. are always talking about go and prune your grasses this time, this time, this time. Yeah. Uh, most of your grasses you can actually leave through the winter. It actually is quite pretty. You can leave them through the winter and then you'll see next year's new growth popping up. One of the things that people do is they'll come and hack it all the way down to the base and you actually don't have to do that. You can oh. leave that there and then you'll see where the new growth is coming the next year because that's one of the things that will happen if you cut it all the way down to the base. Sometimes you're taking off the next year's growth and stunting it for the next year. Okay, so I would worry it would look all scraggly and sad during the winter, yeah. but you don't mind that. You can if you want to. Okay, but so it's not you, necessary. It's not necessary. I like any time you can like eliminate a chore yeah. from our to-do yeah. list. Yeah. So yeah, we'll exactly. take it, we'll take it. Any other tips with the plants down front? Um, the only other thing would be like some of these grasses. This is an evergreen grass. Uh -huh. And so all you'll do is take your hands through and just pull, and that'll oh. pull off any of the dead yeah. that you see. Because um, it will actually want, you want to make sure you don't prune that off because that's actual live and that's going to stunt the, the plant for the next year. So just gently remove. Yeah, and, exactly. and when should we be doing this? When What's our timeline? So line? one of the things with uh, most of your perennials is you'll want to make sure that, you know, you've got your either fall color or it's dropped its leaves all together. Okay. Um, so either one of those, one of the things with the, you know, if it's just in its fall color, you can actually help it go into winter and shut down. So, and then the only other thing will be just, uh, you know, on some of the evergreens, you'll want to make sure you winter water those. Um, it's hard to do, but if you can get out there, it's going to help them get through the winter a little bit better. And if a perennial, like say a hosta, is getting too big or out of control, mm -hmm. is now a good time to thin it? Well, what you can do is split it. And so right now is a great time to split your perennials. Okay. And you can basically go in kind of in the middle of the, the section and actually dig down with a shovel and separate those. Give one to your neighbor if you want. <laughs> Merry or you Christmas. Can, or you can add one to another place in your yard. All right, good information. Thank you so much. And hey, while well, I've got you, you've got a fun fall event coming yes, up. Yes, we do. We've got our, uh, our fall pumpkin fest. Um, it's at Shade Home and Garden. It's something that's been around for a long time that we're bringing back to the garden center. Um, he had it for about 40 years. Nice. and had it every year. People our age remember going there when they were kids. Oh, so it's, it's something we're trying to carry on that tradition. So, and we'll be having it. It'll be the last three weekends of October. So um, go to Facebook and you can see the times on those because they do vary depending on the day. Cool, I love those carryover traditions. So I'm yeah. sure a lot of people are celebrating the bring back. Very yeah, fun. we're excited. We'll link you over to their Facebook page too if you want details about that event. Thanks again. Thank you.